Hello and welcome to American Music, where we live our stories through the shared experiences of musical artists, scholars, and storytellers. I'm Randall Keith Horton, your host, and today's program welcomes and introduces the very fine young artist, Mr. Edward W. Hardy. Welcome to the show, Edward. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. We're yeah. so glad you are with us. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to begin with a bio, a short biography of Edward, so that our viewers can get a sense of what his background is. A critically acclaimed violinist, violist, and composer, Edward Wellington Hardy performs as a soloist, chamber, and orchestral musician throughout the United States and abroad, and has performed in New York City's Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, Avery Fisher Hall, Merkin Concert Hall, the Apollo Theater, and the Signature Theater, among others. Mr. Hardy's musical composition and performance in the smash hit show, The Woodsman, has received rave reviews from critics and celebrities alike. The New York Times wrote, Edward W. Hardy, who composed the omnipresent music, plays the violin superbly, unquote. His album, the off-Broadway solo recording of The Woodsman, is featured in BroadwayWorld.com, who wrote, what we can't stop listening to, the haunting violin solos from off-Broadway's The Woodsman, played by Edward W. Hardy. Mr. Hardy has also worked in theater, opera, film, and with well-known producers, and in the foundational and music dance and acting conservatory training milieu. He has served as a concert master or soloist with symphony and chamber orchestras in the United States. Edward W. Hardy earned the Master of Music degree in violin performance from the Aaron Copland School of Music at Queens College of the City University of New York. And we are indeed privileged to interview Mr. Hardy. Edward, tell us please about your work with orchestras briefly, and then your work as a violinist. And I see a very interesting instrument sitting here. <laughs> This violin, we really would like to know about this. Can you give us sure. an idea? So sure, sure. With orchestras, I've yeah. performed in a lot of orchestras um, throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. It could be in music festivals. It could be in a school setting, yeah. the random gig. Uh -huh. um, and then it depends, because I also play violin and viola, so I could be playing in the viola section principal or in the violin section anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it kind of created more opportunities that way for myself. Excellent. And this violin, as a soloist, I have been dreaming about for a very long time. So this is the black violin. It was made uh, maybe like a t decade ago. Could you wait? Could, no, no, oh, yeah, no, 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 thank you. I don't want to be responsible for that. Could you hold it nice and steady for one of our cameras, sure. though, so that we can see it in terms of its design on both sides, please? Sure. That side. It's beautiful, right? This is why it's called the black violin. Bravo, yes. Uh, and then, uh huh, and then this side. This side. Very uh, asymmetrical shapes. Nothing is really symmetrical. The F holes are not. Um, traditional, right. even displaced. The it fingerboard kind of goes up a little bit. The bridge has its own unique design. And then this is a scroll. Yeah. Very interesting. And how did you come by this instrument? So this is an instrument made by a very well-known violin luther, uh, Guy Rebute, in New York City. And I went to him as a child. Uh, I didn't speak much. As a child? As a child, I went there. Um, you know, I consider myself a child at, at in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was in high school. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was a kid. child. All right, you got it. <laughs> um, and I went with my parents, my mom. She spoke a lot more for me. But uh, I went there looking for a viola or an instrument for college. Yeah. And I was playing, and he said, oh, you sound pretty good. I, I think you would like this instrument. And he brought me this instrument. And I started to play it. I thought it looked beautiful. It sounded beautiful. Yeah. I was in love. And I asked him, hey, guy, how much, how much does this cost? He said, oh, it's too much. And I started yeah, that, laughing. Okay, yeah, right. that was the answer, right? That was it. Nothing specific. Nope, didn't okay, ask. Okay, yeah. Never thought about it. Yeah. Um, it was such a hilarious story. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been thinking about it for years, 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 years. So recently, a few, like a month ago, actually, I went to him 
And I said, hey, guy, do you remember me? I know it was a very long time ago. I went my mom, <laughs> you know, as a little kid. Uh, he used to have that black violin. <laughs> and he said, I do. You kind of ring a bell. Let's talk. So I talked to him for about two hours in his shop. Yeah, yeah. And he let me take it home. Great. And I performed it that day. I closed one of my off-Broadway shows. And I actually have it for a specific show later in November. So <laughs> you, do. Yeah. you do. Well, you'll be playing this violin for us in today's program. Is Definitely. That, right? that is superb. Now again, Edward, we're interested in how you came to be the violinist that you are. I know you personally mm -hmm. as the soloist with <laughs> the chamber orchestra I conducted in the music of Vivaldi that right. the, from the Four Seasons. Right, right, summer. You did a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful performance thank there. Thank you. And thank you for <laughs> that. And I'm thinking now, okay, how can our audience get to know a little bit more of about how you became a violinist. Sure. A performing professional violinist. I started when I was seven and a half. Um, and started I started studying for the, for the first time. Right, for the first time. I oh, okay. had any interest in it. Um, and I had to give up a lot of, mm. of my interest. I went to an elementary school that had a lot of opportunities. I was in a chess club, doing tournaments. I was in a math club, science, dance, acting. I was doing a million things. Wow. But there was one year they said, oh, you need to pick one. And, and I was very upset, uh, but again, I didn't talk much, so I ended up pointing to a group of violinists, and I said, that's what I want to do. I didn't talk much. Now, what did that matter? We were oh, I was very shy. Very shy. Very, very, very shy. Quiet child. Very shy, quiet, reserved, observed everything. Yeah. Uh, very aware and listening to you, yeah. but I didn't want to talk to nobody. Well, did, music, <laughs> did it turn out that music became a mode and medium of personal expression that oh, definitely. in some way took the place of speaking, communicating verbally? Oh yes, um, a lot of my emotions were also not like shown on my face. So playing music was the only way uh, I escaped reality like that. I was oh. a storyteller. It was the only way I can like convey what I'm actually feeling. Oh, so yeah. it became literally my voice as a kid. As yeah. I grow older, like you know, it was, it was easier. Yeah. But um, music kind of chose me and I was just stuck with it for a very long time. That's powerful, <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, I see another violin here. If we could be right. brief about this. This sure. reminds me of one of Michael Jackson's gloves. <laughs> yeah. What is this? What this is, this? is, is this? a beautiful violin that was uh, custom made for me for my show as well. Custom made for you? Custom made. And I told, I told her, you know, I, it was the Michael Jackson glove that I remember, oh. um, inspired by it, but also Liberace because his flair oh, of, yeah. of the robes and the pianos. Have, yeah. So I said, I want a violin like this. <laughs> and <laughs> finally got one. That's gorgeous. <laughs> yes, she's very beautiful. Yeah, you were really gorgeous. It was really nice to meet you, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. Of course. That's amazing. Well, we're going to go into performance mode now. A new composition of yours as a soloist. Yes. And the title of it is Evolution, yes. and it is in many styles. Correct. Can you share that with us? Talk of course, to us about of course. that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evolution is a piece that I made a year ago, mm -hmm. and I started with just two notes, E and G. Uh, it starts with a spiritual, it's all black music, it's okay. all the evolution of black music and how I saw that. Oh, uh -huh. So it starts with two notes, goes to a spiritual, goes mm -hmm. to hip hop, with some jazz elements, Whoa. classical kind of sprinkled all over it and Whoa. it makes a full circle back around. And this is all written specifically for the opening of the African American Smithsonian Museum. So I performed this for the Black Caucus at Howard Theater a year ago. In Washington DC? Yes. The opening of the Black History Museum? Is yes, the Smithsonian African American Museum. Yes, sir. Yeah, and it was sponsored by Google, like Google.com. So you composed this piece for that for occasion? For them, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and that was, you know, I, I realized I should, I should continue to play this again. It was a cool piece, and yeah. I really liked it. It shows off my different uh, abilities, so. That's wonderful. We will definitely listen for your variations or the various styles <laughs> that you present and offer and include in the piece. Just to wrap up a little bit about what we've talked about thus far, I'd like to say that I knew a luthier who was brilliant in his violin making activity. Mm. Uh, I actually had him on our show here, uh, actually when the show was broadcast in Texas, 
and I learned so much about the process of making violins. And I know that you, in terms of this black violin, although it's a loner, that you are so interested in the process of creating these instruments and, and making them so that they fit your personality and, you know, as a, as a performer. Right. Does this instrument have a sound that is any different from other violins that you've purchased or played? Is there anything special about the sound or is it more that the instrument is beautifully shaped but pretty much the same as any quality violin. Sure. Uh, this Luther guy, Rebute, um, gave me a lot of stories about how... Re Rebute, Rebute is, his, is right. his name, okay. Right, and how the process of, of buying wood and letting it stay there and age for 15 years before he touches it and creates a beautiful instrument mm -hmm. for a, spe a very specific reason, or someone's liking. You know, I can go to him and say, hey, I want a dark instrument that's very round or that projects very well and is bright and shimmering. So no, this... No, dark. No, no, no. Sure. Tell our audience what you mean. When you say a dark... Dark, you a mean dark the music, tone. The, the tone the tam yeah. is rich, the timbre. Very right? dark, yeah. Dark <laughs> means a rich... A rich A rich tone, tone tending toward the lower um, vibrations, you know, right. the, the lower end of the uh, spectrum of sound. Exactly. Okay, rich and deep. Yeah, yeah. Or the opposite, being bright, something that's very piercing or very shimmering, yeah. um, very audible, it carries over the orchestra, things yeah. like that. Higher overtones. Right, so right. Overtones of the, yes, uh -huh. So this instrument, um, it's kind of famous on its own, was featured in Strad uh, uh -oh. magazine, had a lot of press and all that, mm -hmm. but this instrument is very unique and I connect to it because uh, it reminds me of a Stradivarius, actually. That's what I was hoping you'd get it to. It does, it really does. A Strad. So Stradivarius. my teacher, Daniel Phillips, um, he let me borrow, or not borrow, but he brought his, his Strad to class one day mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to our lesson, and he said, oh, Eddie, you can play it. I said, wow, this is, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll It's Stradivarius. It's Stradivarius. It's Stradivarius. And I, I grabbed it, and then I, I tried to play the Sibelius Concerto, and I sound terrible. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, why do I sound so bad? Oh. And I realized it was because the instrument has so many colors and characters so you have to get used to how the instrument is itself. For instance, when I play on the G string, it has its own personality than the A, then D, or E. Right. Everything starts to change. It, feel, it feels like you're playing a few different instruments to get different colors wow. out of the instrument. Let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Edward W. Hardy performing his original composition in many styles for us, Evolution.
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the marvelous performance by a marvelous artist, Mr. Edward W. Hardy. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now we are moving ahead. I know what you're going to perform, <laughs> and I know that you will announce what's going to be performed. Say a little bit about it in terms of what it means to you. I did a lot of research in the past about this piece, and it was written, I believe, for his wife that was very ill, uh, and it has to do with the Holy Trinity. It's a very religious I see. piece. At the same time, me being a composer and how I like to add myself into pieces. I wrote my own story on what's happening, <laughs> you know, and it kind of changes throughout time, sure. but it could be about somebody, it could be about relatives. So the name of this piece is Chacon? Yes, Chacon is dance. It's a Baroque it's a dance. dance. It's a Baroque dance. Baroque dance. Which is from a suite, the uh, form of the Baroque, a Baroque suite? Yeah, it's uh, Partita number no. two in D minor. I'm gonna ask our audience to be very careful to listen to the beautiful melodies here and to listen to Edward's beautiful performances because I know very, very well that they will enjoy it. So we're going to listen now to Mr. Edward Wellington, <laughs> not Ellington, but Wellington <laughs> Hardy, <laughs> perform the Chacon of Johann Sebastian Bach. And you will tell our audience a little bit about it exactly. when you start. The piece I'm going to be performing next is called the Chacon by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's in the key of D minor, broken into three thirds. First section is in D minor, second D major, and back to D minor. Uh, I have a strong connection to this piece. It's a piece that I continue to learn throughout my life. Uh, as I begin to mature and experience new things, I can find new emotions and characters in this piece I wasn't able to as a child. So the next piece I will be performing is Chacon.
Thank you very much, very, very much, Edward. Of course. And obviously, we have a slightly different set here, <laughs> and we'll let our audience know what that's all about in a few minutes. But sure. the whole idea of the Chacon and how you expressed it and how you performed it was just beautiful, and Thank we appreciate that Thank very, you. very much. Now, what else would we want to uh, look at? I'm thinking about the Woodsman. Can you tell us about sure. that? What is that? The Woodsman was an off-Broadway play. I composed music for, I was a music director and performed as an onstage solo violinist. And it was my first serious off-Broadway show. Um, I wrote when I was a junior in, in college. Yeah. yeah. And uh, at first I didn't think it was gonna be a big thing and then caught a huge following because of L. Frank Baum and the story of the Tin Man, how he became. Yep. And um, I started to become very detail-oriented when I started to become more of a storyteller. Yeah. You know, everyone had its own theme, everything was very detailed yeah. um, and synchronized with what the actors, singers, and some dancers and the puppets were doing. Yes. So it was a great, great show that um, kept on coming back every year. Different off-Broadway home, more celebrities, it was featured on PBS, the album out, all those great things. <laughs> That's exactly what I was hoping that we would get to in terms of the PBS appreciation and, and broadcasting. And we've been hearing a little bit of that in the background as you've been telling us about it yeah. with our trusty and wonderful <laughs> world of sir. That's right. <laughs> Jukebox right. here. That was the uh, most popular song from the play. From the play, exactly. Now, what else? where else are we going with this with Poe? Where are we Poe, with this? Um, Four Days with Edgar Allan Poe yeah. as a play that's going to come out. It's going to be off-Broadway with uh, this amazing author. His name is Edward Medina, uh -huh. great friend of mine, his mm -hmm. family. Um, I'm so lucky to be working with him. And it's a play about Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. It's a 19th century uh, crime mystery yeah. about uh, his disappearance in life. And in a 21st century crime, um, in this play within a play, I can't say too much about it. Yeah, sure. You okay, know, I don't want to give it all away. That's I'm fine. writing the music to it. I'll be in the show as well. And we're, we're really hoping that the trajectory goes to Broadway. To you know, Broadway. To Broadway. Yeah, we're going to start small first uh, at first, but that's where we want to end. Congratulations. Now, speaking of Broadway, we have keyboard here, and we have your interest in playing sure. a melody from a Broadway musical. Sure. What is that melody, and what is that <laughs> song? Uh, I really love Pure Imagination yes. from Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Yeah. It's a so song. It's my go-to, so <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a performance now from Mr. Edward W. Hardy of Pure Imagination. Thank you very much. Mr. Hardy, we are so pleased to have had you here on our program and your beautiful music. We <laughs> share you. so much in wanting your success 
and we thank you so very much for being who you are in the arts, especially as such a young man thank you. and a businessman, putting forth his music for our uplifting and enjoyment. And we hope to see you again on American Music, where we live our stories through the shared experiences of musicians, scholars, and storytellers. Join us again.